Superb evening to everyone, guys. So today we are here for the illustration for books by Lavanya Suresh here. So it's going to be a superb uh, session here. So today we are here for this illustration for books um, webinar session. This is going to be a two-hour session where uh, Lavanya will actually be uh, teaching you about how you can create superb illustrations for your uh, book covers and all those things. Okay, so. Uh, to quickly give a brief about her and uh, let her take the stage, I'll just uh, explain who, what is her background and who is she, all these things first. So, uh, Lavanya Suresh is actually an independent and a versatile artist. Uh, she is skilled in multiple forms of uh, art pencil sketches, art pencil sketches, and uh, doodling, canvas painting, portraits, and digital illustrations. So collaborated uh, with a lot of artists also for a first exhibition. First exhibition, and uh, she comes with five years of experience in web design, graphic design. So she is still working in the newspapers also in the uh, self-publishing firm. She created a lot of illustrations. She created a lot of illustrations. So that's the basic thing about her. Um, okay, so I'll quickly uh, give her the um, access to this, and uh, she can take it up from here. Yeah, hi, Lavin. Hi. Um, welcome to illustration for books. I'm Lavin, and uh, I'll be explaining to you. Uh, about how you should draw and illustrate a book, how you should design a book, and the whole process behind it, and um, uh, how, how I mean how the art fundamentals that you might need to know, you know, to design a book. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. Sorry, that's actually. Here. Okay, yeah. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. The, there will be an introduction. That I'll, I'll tell you the process behind what, uh, how you know to illustrate a cover design, and uh, the the challenges that every designer or an artist or an illustrator you know goes through while designing the cover, and how to illustrate and design. And then I'll have a smile show, a small demo, and then we'll have a Q and A session. Before I give you an introduction about illustration and everything, I'm going to brush you through some uh, basics about illustration, some basics about books, and uh, some basics about design. So, as you might know, this so uh, this uh, you cover illustration. You have two types of illustrations when you do a book. So there are cover illustrations and there is interior illustration. So you know, like how the words say, you know, explain on its own. It's like cover illustrations for cover, front cover or back cover and interior illustrations for interior, inside the book. And mostly considered, you know, while designing for children's books. And there are two types of books. There's fiction and non-fiction. And um, there are like different genres of books. So there are um, thriller, there's romance, uh, while designing, while designing certain books, you know, while designing thriller books, while designing romance books, or any genre, it's important to understand the feel of the book, the tone of the book, the spirit that the book is trying to give you by, you know, uh, by the look and the feel of the book. So, how do you do that? You have certain colors, you have certain uh, types, you have certain effects that you give to certain. Book. So how you treat in each, each and every book matters a lot. Um, so how you place your uh, title, how you place your subtitle, how you place the um, colors, how you place the different kind of elements, all that matters. So I'm getting a message. Is this not clear? Is that clear or not clear? Is there an issue here? I, I guess it's clear, but it's clear, uh, but the video is stuck. Not sure if it's on the mic end. 
No, no, it's pretty good. Actually, I think. Can I continue? I think you can, uh, Arvind, you can. I think you can try to reason with this. Everyone. Yeah, it should be clear. Okay, it's better not clear. Okay, can uh, can, can I continue? Can I continue? Is it clear right can, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue, Lavanya. Continue, Lavanya. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you see me? Can I continue? Can I continue? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Ah. So the kind of um, the kind of the kind of treatment you give to each and every cover is important. So, for for instance, covers like. You have uh, fantasy, you have sci-fi, but you 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 see the difference, right? The colors that they use have is similar, but the kind of treatment that they give for each and every genre is different. You have like sort of uh, uh, you know fonts for uh, sci-fi. You you use serif fonts for fantasy. The colors are dark but the treatment is different so that is important you need to know the basics of design and illustration if you you know if you must if you must design uh, if you must know to design a book so what other genres that we know usually are the non fiction and humor the non fictions usually they uh, emphasize more on the title than the imagery of the book and uh, the humor you see the the, the humor the illustration that they the illustration that has uh, been used gives you gives you a feel right the humor feel that's important than the title so so the treatment again is different here the colors have been used the colors used have been similar but the treatment is different so that is important and uh, again here the fairy tale and biography colors again they are similar but the treatment is different because this those are two different genres you know um for fairy tale you have all these curvy fonts and floral designs and you give all the floral feel you know but for biography you need to give the feel of the person the biography is all about so um so that's what the, the the protagonist of that book has to be given more importance along with the title so everything matters here while designing apart from the genres there are like certain basic elements of design that you must follow like line color shape space texture typography size form and value so what is line line is the something that connects between different dots so that gives you you know a dividing space that you, know, you draw a line that gives you division of two different things color color is something that creates a mood every color is has its own meaning every color has a story behind it so when the, the kind of color you use is important you cannot use red for everything you cannot use, use greens for everything there is a reason you have to use you know the colors there is a reason behind you use each and every color yeah color then shape shape is some a uh, shape is uh, you know a formation of different uh, formation of uh, different lines like the boundaries that lines create and turns into a shape so so um, yeah so i'm getting messages is this all right because i'm getting messages here you can try to say something Uh, um, I just want to. I just want to. Um, yeah, I just want to say that uh, I'll just finish. You know, giving you the inputs, and then later we can have like a Q and Q and A session in between because it's kind of distracting me right now, and I'm not able to follow. So I'm not able to go with the flow. So we have a Q and A session. Uh, after like an hour or so so uh let's have you know you can ask me all the doubts that i hope that's okay okay so let's go back to the basic elements of design um oh, i was talking about shape then space space is something that you know that the the area that creates around the 
elements of your design. It can mean anything. It may not mean anything. It might emphasize on the elements of design, but the space is important. You need to have space. You need to have a breathing space. That's it. You have to emphasize the elements of the design, and those can be emphasized by space as well. Then texture. Texture is some uh, a three dimensional appearance, a feel that you give to. And the, either the typo or the image or the illustration on your cover. Then the typography. Typography is how you use your uh, title design, how you use your subtitle, how you place the author name, and uh, how you make, you know, how you play with all those. That's typography. That is important again. Then the size. Size, it tells you. Uh, size lets you you know emphasize on certain aspects on your cover it um, matters because there is certain hierarchy that you have to follow while designing a cover you cannot just make you know increase the size of everything or you cannot just make everything small there is a reason why you use uh, certain sizes and um, that's important you have to know size as well size is important so So yeah, size. Then form. Form is again, you bring few elements together that create an object or or a type or an image that that creates a form. So that's form. And value is the depth that you give. That that is like uh, lighter shade to darker shade from the uh, you know from the background to the foreground. Anything you give you the depth in that book. That's the value. I hope we are all clear with the basic elements. The basic stuff is uh, explained. So let's move on to the introduction of illustration. So how important is a book cover design? Let me tell you. Uh, the purpose of a book cover design is to draw the attention of your potential reader away from the other books and. Uh, you do that what makes your book stand out of you know the shelf so let's look at the anatomy of the book you have like you have three three basic parts the front cover spine and back cover the designing is not restricted to front cover alone you know spine and back cover are equally important the design must spread throughout your throughout the Cover that has that is the front, that spine, and back. So uh, it's you know it's nice to say that most uh, there are many popular books, there are many popular authors. But what exactly you know makes a new author you know publish their books? What would you do? What would how would you help a new author you know bring bring their works into the limelight? That's where self-publishing. Uh, companies have taken this game one step further. They there are like hundreds and thousands and tons of books being published every year, and not all the authors are famous authors. They are all most of them are new authors. They have just entered the field. So how would you help them publish their books? So if you are a reader and uh, you would you would just would. Any, any book that you find any attractive, book that you find attractive. You know, the book cover that is attractive, won't you just at least pick it up and see from the book shelf, you know, like what it is all about, who the author is. So that is what we do. We make the or we make the reader pick that up from the shelf. So how would you do that? The front cover, front cover has to be attractive. Front cover. So let's look at front cover. Front cover is divided into two things. That's like imagery and typography. Front cover is like the preview of the book. Front cover is like a movie poster. When you look at a movie poster, you get a little idea about what the movie is all about. You get like who are the who play in that movie, who act in that movie, what the, what the genre of the movie is through their colors, through the through the kind of treatment that they give to their poster. You get an idea, right? You get a rough rough idea. So. That's what front cover must do. It must give you an idea of what the book is all about. You know, 
people usually say never judge a book by its cover but that's actually not possible right now you have to judge a book by its cover that's what design is all about <laughs> so how do you how do you make that front cover attractive and uh, so how do you do that so there is like book cover imagery book cover imagery like uh, it, it it includes more of illustrations you can have like it can be a it can be a photograph it can be play play you know just a combination of different shapes it can be mixture of colors it can be anything that's book imagery but how well you use that book imagery is the key that's when you you know you go back to the elements of design ele- uh, the elements basic elements the line the shape the form texture value all that has to be used while designing the imagery of the book cover so it must basically showcase the spirit and the tone of the book it must uh, you know it must bring out the feel of what the content is all about for example if for a children's book you would like to use images and colors that are more attractive and pleasing to the children also your image must be design friendly so it should be there should be enough space for the title the subtitle and the author's name you cannot just fill up the fill up the page with the image and there should that there is no place left to the um for the title and stuff like that there has to be enough space so the image has to be used in such a way that the title also you know plays a major role then comes the typography book cover typography so the it includes basically three things it's uh, the title the subtitle and the author's name so it is important for you to know the hierarchy of the content that you uh, design that you are trying to bring more attention to while designing so in terms of where the text should go in terms of how you place the title how you place the t- subtitle you should study typography you should know you should know that the title you should know the title is what the name of the book is at least the name of the book is the title of the book so that has to be brought into attention first and then comes the author's name and then comes the subtitle so also while designing title you have to make sure that you consider the fact that this is going to be a thumbnail while you you know sell it online people are going to watch it like this small size this small so your title has to be seen in this size so that's very important so that's why you know title has to stand out so equal importance has to be given to both title subtitle author's name and the imagery so this is another example of you know the uh good combination of titles and subtitles and the imagery that has been used the colors that have been used it gives you the whole feel of the book and uh, it makes you at least want to pick up and see what the book is all about but what should exactly the front cover do it should give you a sneak peek of what's to come for example this book the life of pi the designer has you know done a really good job in you know framing the story and building an emotional connection between between the you know protagonist and us like it brings out the protagonist here that is the uh, guy the tiger and we are able to connect to that you know, instantly looking at the book so it gives you the hint of overall theme of the book or overall you know story of the book without giving you any spoilers it does not tell you what the uh it does not give you sorry what i just got a message okay uh do you mind if i answer the questions later like after i finish talking about the book cover illustration and i'll get back to you on that okay um so that's what uh, so the book has to give you a sneak peek of what's to come without giving any spoilers then 
end you should uh, let the readers know the genre of the book so that's more important while give you while you give a subtle preview of what the book is all about so genre bringing out the genre of the book in your design is very important way you use your colors type and everything you cannot you know there are like uh, most many people who uh, would you know like to have a variety of uh, genres in their bookshelves but there are certain people who specifically like certain genres you don't really want to disappoint them right you don't want them to you know have take a book uh think that it's a fairy tale or a thriller and turn it around read the book description and find out that it's a sci-fi you don't want them to you don't want that to happen they won't buy your book your book your art will go you know it's of no use so you must follow the genre you must bring the genre in your design then introduce the protagonist of the book so whether the protagonist is like irritatingly perfect or tragically flawed guy or an anti hero or just another model citizen readers should have the connection towards the protagonist through your front cover design like for example this book little women by luza me accord you know you can you can just you know connect with the book by seeing the book cover you know that it's about these these four women you don't know what what's going to happen you don't know what the story is about but you know that it's about these four women so you introduce the protagonist here you give the reader a little feel about what the book is all about and you know you don't again spoil them by telling telling the story so that's important you should introduce your protagonist and then you should follow the basic principles of design that is emphasis that emphasis emphasis is how you emphasize certain elements of your design like here is the title you it's it's a, it's a this is the jungle book so the elements would be all jungle scenes you have animals but that that would clutter the design right so what this designer has done was he has brought certain tone to the jungle feel and he has emphasized more on the title of the book you know the title the fonts we use and the way he has placed the title you know overlapping them with the leaves and everything so that is important emphasis is important then balance how you balance your title subtitle the design this design has lot of symmetry and all this you know curvy designs and everything but the title still stands out so that is the balance that the designer has done here and the, even the subtitle stands out stands out here and the author's name obviously stands out so uh, balance is important everything has to be seen but it it shouldn't be too much as well so balance then contrast again another jungle book uh, example that i would like to give you um contrast is usually you know uh done mostly by playing with colors so here again the designer has done a really good contrast of you know different colors he has made the uh background pink and bring, he has brought out the animals that's a contrast you can see yellow blue pink shades here you usually don't use this combination everywhere so contrast is also important then repetition so in this cover like you have seen um there is a repetition of colors that that the designer has used so there's like yellow there's white the the designer has picked that yellow color from the little element that um uh, has been used that that uh, has been used here the camera he has picked that yellow and uh, he has used that in the title and it's more it's more just using the same colors but it's again attractive it's design friendly it's readable it's nice to look at so it gives you the feel of the book it's the kind of elements that has been used the film roll in the background and everything uh that's actually nice so the repetition of colors is has been used here and repetition is important while designing the cover 
And movement. Movement is where your eyes move while looking at a book cover. So the first thing that you see here while in this book cover is the, the title of the book. The title of the book, then you look at the, the art, the imagery of the book, what these people are doing, and then you look at the subtitle, the author name. So how does this, you know, how do you look at what what is the order that you follow by looking at this? So that is the movement. So where, how do you want to take your design, take your reader to, uh, you know, to look at, you know, what exactly should the reader look at first? So that is movement that is, that you should follow while designing. So you might, for instance, in this design, the title is standing out. You can even do that as an imagery. You can, can there can be images that you can look at first without the title also. So that is movement white space white space also negative space that we say um, is important not every negative space creates a meaning like how it is in this cover in this cover this cover has a meaning the negative space that has been used shows a man here the invisible man and uh, it kind of justifies the title as well so that has been really well really really used very well here but um, it's not necessary that you use the white space everywhere. It can be, it can, it need not mean anything every time, but that is important. That, that brings out, that brings out the other elements of your cover and uh, it gives you more meaning to other elements as well. So these are a few of the works that I had done um, using, uh, using these basic principles of design and all the other rules and elements of design that we have just discussed. So like you see in this cover, you see the protagonists have been given importance as well as the title, title of the books has been given importance. So um, it's, more, it's more of a sci-fi children's sci-fi book and the colors have been used in that manner, considering that it's for children. So yeah, that's how you design a book. That's how you illustrate a book. So you can you understand your audience. You uh, understand who it is for and how you are supposed to uh, and how you're supposed to bring the feel of the book. You read what the book is all about, and then you bring out that effect on your front cover. Again, this book uh, it's dark. It's it's rugged. It's about a woman who is all you know. Um, what you see in the image. So, uh, how do you bring that effect? I use dark colors. I use colors that are very dull, that, that's all brown, and uh, that kind of gives you a mood to this book, right? That you can you kind of understand what this can be. So uh, that's how you play. That's how you understand. That's how you design a book cover. You have to understand everything: the audience, the content, everything. And the back cover. The back cover consists of these things: the blurb of the book, the previews, author bio, ISBN number that is uh, international standard number, and a barcode, and sometimes prize as well. Some people, you know, they have they add prize in the back. Some some authors, some authors would like prize inside the cover, inside the book. So it depends upon certain authors. So um, so the, so. So this is what back cover is all about. It's just equally important to the cover. It's more of a content than imagery here. Um, the kind of content you use, you do not want to give away the whole story. Again, here you do not want to spoil the uh, readers by, you know, giving them giving them the uh, idea about what the climax would be. You don't want to do that. You just give the content. You just give the story, a little bit of the story. Then you have book reviews. You all have reviewed the book reviews. Some major reviews that you add here. Then the author bio about the author. What you would like to say? Uh, the general information. General information about the author. What he is, where he's from, and stuff like that. And the ISBN number. That is the international standard book number. That is that differs from each and every book that is being specifically you know given for a certain book so that is important as well that's like an identification number for that book and uh, the that, that comes with the barcode 
and the price, the price of the book. Sometimes you know you add the price at the back, so that is also important. So all these elements, uh, you know, have to be placed at the back cover. And the spine. Spine is the only way you spot a book from your bookshelf. So you have to make sure your spine is readable, your spine is clear, and uh, your author author's name and title uh, title. The title of the book has to be there along with the publisher's logo. That that there shouldn't be much information on the spine, otherwise it would be crowded, it would be cluttered. You do not want to do that. That has to be clear, that has to be readable from far. So this is what um, you know book designing is. These are the three um, major form the major uh, parts of the anatomy of the book. This is another design that I, I would like to show you in mind that I have illustrated, where almost all the design principles that we have just discussed have been used here. You see contrast here, you see space here, you see the kind of typography that have been used here. I bring the I have brought the feel of the book, the content here. It's not too cluttered. There is balance and uh, you explain you you it's not it's not cluttered it's, this is just clear you just need to put something like this and uh, don't ask me why it's pineapple that's what the author had asked it, it doesn't it i don't know how it connects to the title of the book but uh, pineapple is what the author had asked so so sometimes you just have to listen to your clients no matter how sometimes it doesn't mean anything but yeah that is important and uh, uh, that's fun it's also fun you get to you know challenge yourself you get to play around as much as possible there's no restriction with the colors with type or anything right you just they ask you some really weird stuff sometimes but it's nice you just get to play you just get to play with your colors colors the type the image everything so um so for those who would like to, you know, uh, who are not much into design or art, but who would still like to design your book covers, I would suggest this site. This site, you know, has like really good free book cover designing facilities. Let me just show you how this site works. So this is Canva. Can you see my screen? I hope you see my screen here so this is canva and uh, this is your site so you just type book cover here book cover so you get you select book cover and you have like lot of templates that you see here so for example you have you choose this template it takes you to another page where you can edit this template you can uh, can edit the you know the subtitle you can edit the text here you can edit the title right you can edit the image the image is editable so why don't you check this site later when after this workshop sometime after this workshop so you will know how you know how you can place uh, the typography there are many lots and lots of templates here you can check out, check them out, and you know, use, you can experiment them, just play with it and see how your book is good. They have really good templates. So, and it's free, you don't have to pay the basic stuff. That's that's like that. There's like a Canva Pro or something that is uh, paid stuff, but I don't think you might need that. That's that's extremely professional. So, uh, for basic designers, for basic artists who would like to, you know, uh, design their own book, you know, uh, you, who are, you, if you're not able to connect to an artist or if you're not able to bring out a proper book, if you're not satisfied with the illustrations that have been given to you or design that has been given to you, you can try this. You can, uh, you can either you have like lots and lots of fonts here, typefaces here, so you can try them all out and. Uh, yeah, this is fun as well. Yeah, you should learn how to do this. So, um, so 
that's what book cover book cover illustration is all about then book interior illustration interior illa this is this is one of my work that i did for my author um interior illustrations can be in many forms it can just be in one page can be spread into two different pages so it can have content in the page so it can be anything this one didn't have a content so i had just just one page illustration so the protagonists here are the mother and son and uh, and the fact that they are working in the uh, vegetable market and that son is like um, he or he also studies while work so i had to bring that out i had to make the scene crowded but not so crowded and i had to bring these characters out but also bring them in you know i also you know show that they are in a crowded market place so i added crowd in the background if you see the the uh, the darker shade behind and the small strokes of you know people standing behind that's the way you show crowd that's how you show you know the depth and uh, it's not disturbing the uh, foreground here and you can still see you can still see certain people on the side in the foreground but that's 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 i can not disturbing the protagonist here so that's how you treat an interior illustration you give importance to the protagonist without you know uh, making them just stand out on their own and uh, uh, without you know disturbing the background you need to have a background you need to have a scene you need to have a depth but again your protagonist have to stand out and this is the way you do it so um this is another example this is for this is a map it's like a um uh, you know fantasy map that i had done once so um the author wanted everything it's all flat basically it's very flat but they want he wanted everything in one page and he wanted waterfalls he wanted huts he wanted castle he wanted houses he wanted mountains he wanted, he wanted mountains trees, he wanted everything, everything everything in one everything, everything in one place so everything. um how do you add that so this is how i did i spread that it, this is basically three different sheets it's a spread it's spread to three different sheets and uh, that's how you that's how i could give detail details for each and every element in the scene and nothing here is disturbed nothing here is given more prominence everything is given equal importance here that's how maps should be like right you should see you should be able to see everything so i treated this like any other map and uh, i also gave this uh, map a little depth you know to give a little you know fantasy effect so that is important how you treat your illustration also is very important this is um this is my by actually this is something that i found online i just wanted to show you how uh you know interior illustrations along with uh, along with content is designed so you can see that the main element in on the left illustration is the girl is that octopus but again Uh, they don't take up the whole space there is a depth that the author designer has given they uh, the designer has given the uh, uh, feel of the sea underwater feel and everything and also has given the in, in enough space to you know write the content of your of the book so that's very important that's how you design an interior illustration so uh it's just not illustration it's just not just drawing and sketching and everything you need to know how you place your sketch you need to know how you place your elements in your illustration and how you um you know play with the colors because you cannot just use anything and everything some people just put every color like anything all the colors and thinking that it's attractive but that's not how it works you need to give enough importance to the content as well and uh, you need to study you need to study the elements before that you need to have some basic structure and uh, you need to know your fundamentals before you know designing so uh, like we had discussed the fundamentals and basics before um, this illustration has been designed and illustrated based on that so 
how interior illustrations work. So how do you go about designing an interior illustr illustration or uh, interior illustration for a book? So what basically happens is the authors give you there, there are like a lot of inputs from your authors. They tell you what they want, they, they tell you the requirements, how the illustration should be, what all they would like to have in that illustration, like what are different elements in, on the, in that scene that they want. Any specific things like the that boy should be wearing a hat, that lady should have a handbag for sure. That has to be or that has to be a back view, a front view, a top view, whatever those specifications and dimensions of your illustration if it's an a4 if it's going to be a spread in the a4 or an a3 or if it's going to be a landscape or a portrait and if it's going to be a color or a black and white the author is going to give you all these inputs first he'll give you anything and everything and he'll give you all the inputs first and then you have a you know basic discussion with your author so you tell the author what all you feel about the the uh, inputs that he has given, whether it's possible or not, whether certain because because not every person can understand, you know, the sense of perspective, the sense of design. You can't expect anything. Everyone to you know understand that, right? So um, you have to give, you have to discuss that with your author. You have to give them the basic knowledge of what is possible, what is not possible, and what all the challenges that he and you might be facing while you come up with an illustration with this uh, illustration that he has asked for. Apart from that, you can even give your own ideas. Uh, that's when you give your touch to that illustration as well. You have to give your ideas also. You need to give your inputs because that is important. That's what that's what you have to do because you are going to illustrate, right? So um, you have to you have to bring your inputs as well. And after a lot of lot lot of uh, brainstorming and brainstorming sessions and everything, you come up with certain options. So this is how the process goes. You have a first draft. You give the author a first rough sketch or something, and uh, once you give that to the author, if there are like certain changes in the first draft first rap that the author would actually give you he might say that you know um, anything anything it can be anything it can be just the kind of uh, effect that you have given it can be the detailing that you need to give anything anything that he or she might feel that might be first change first set of changes in the first draft then after you come up with a revised version you start rendering it you have to give colors to it, you have to give effects to it, you have to give it a final touch. So after you do that, you cross-check with the author. You check if you know the illustration that, that you have done is uh, has come out just as the author has you know requested has asked you to do it, and just how the brief is, and uh, and if it matches your title, subtitle, and author's name and everything. And also spell check your title and subtitle and all the other typography content that you have, you have uh, placed on your design. And then check if the logo of your publishing company is there or however the company has, you know, the, uh, you know, the rules like how their logo has to be placed and everything. Make sure that is there and make sure the blog, the reviews, the bio, your ISBN is correct, all these basic stuff you have to cross check before you submit it to your author. And uh, make sure the spellings are right. A lot of people, they they miss out on that. You know, I design stuff, I do check spellings. That's what they say. So you, that, is, that is equally important. That is like the basic thing. When you when you submit anything, you spell check. You spell check any, anything, anything, you spell check. So, that is important. So all these you have to cross check before submitting it. So once you have done that, your your illustration is ready, your submission is ready, and yeah, that's it. So this is how your final draft would be. So your so this this is the like um, designed uh, illustration that has actually this is my design. I had designed designed it you know when I was working in. That's the company that I've been working. 
um so the author has chosen this he wanted a bride he wanted you know a traditional look but again not so traditional as well so i had you know made, made it look more contemporary used certain traditional elements but again didn't make it look very traditional as well so the treatment that i gave was you know use certain colors i brought out contrast i gave importance to the title as well so every element in this design is been given equal importance so that is what you are supposed to do you are supposed to keep everything in mind you are supposed to keep the spelling your colors your design what the author has asked everything everything before you submit your design so the challenges that you usually face while designing your uh, book cover is you it's hard to meet author's expectations most of the time because they some of they they are more into writing their writing is different and uh, while writing their thinking goes in certain way and if it if our design doesn't go you know that way then sometimes few authors get disappointed so it's kind of hard to meet their expectations but it's challenging as well you have to know you have to understand what the author expects before you know you design you illustrate and uh, it's important so that's when you that's when you come out of your comfort zone and try new stuff and you learn new things right and uh, yeah mostly authors have their own deadlines they have their own time so it's kind of hard for us to work within that you know fast turnarounds and quick deadlines and everything so that's challenging as well then the more important more important thing here is you have to stay relevant with the times now you have to you have to know each and every kind of style that uh, has been followed everywhere that uh, the kind of palettes that they use they don't use the palettes that they have been using like 10 years before you use different set of colors now and you use different set of typos now if you go and see you know the fonts website the typo website you see so many new fonts coming every day and it's so nice to see such beautiful fonts and um, you have to know that those things are there you have to keep checking on what's happening every day so you have to stay relevant also we don't we don't you know uh do manual illustrations alone now you have to know that we do digital illustrations now there is a, there is a you know a big that's a big step that you know the tech technology has taken here and uh, that's like a very a very helpful uh, uh, facility that we have because we get new illustrations we get really good illustrations when you use when you digitally illustrate Yeah, you have like you do get good good paintings and drawings and illustrations and doodles while you do it manually as well. But here in digital, you have like extra features. You have extra effects that you can do. So uh, you have to adapt yourself to those technological changes, and you have to stay stay true true to your design fundamentals. Like we have discussed earlier, the basic elements, the basic. Uh, principles of design you have to make sure you follow that you cannot cannot go against it because that's like the abc's of your design you cannot change the letter you can you can't change the uh, spelling of certain letters right not certain every letters right so just like that in design you are not supposed to change stuff you are supposed to follow those rules you are supposed to follow the abc's of your design and very challenging to be unique it's very 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 challenging because there are like tons and tons of artists that are you know uh, that are emerging like every day and they have their own styles and it's you can't just come up one day and you know bring out a style of your own and follow it for the rest of your life it's not possible so uh, you have to be un- you know you have to struggle yourself to be unique that's a really big challenge for us and uh, once you get through that i think it will be easier but that phase where you know you uh, 
uh, you try getting your own style and try you know standing out from the crowd that is very difficult and that doesn't happen overnight that takes like years and years so that's all for book design book design uh, book uh, cover design book cover illustrations so here i would like to take a small break and uh, i would like to have a little q and a session if you have any doubts we can uh, we have like 5 minutes for something so we can actually discuss if you have, if you have any doubts we can you can ask me right now questions examples right. being shown can others see them good okay um thank you um yeah the examples that have been shown are few of them are my work few of them have been inspired from uh, you know online thank you thank you so much okay any doubts about book designing anything that you wanted to ask me anything so uh yeah arun right um why for freelancers to get more book projects and get discovered by more authors opportunities to tie up with publishing and self publishing and thoughts on how to price your work okay um so basically you start having your own online portfolio you have to have a certain work of your own being published online and uh, have your uh, works uh, uh, uploaded on you know sites like behance on wix and uh, um, on insta as well it works and uh, and try try these freelance websites that are available right now so you you can upload your works there and uh, you have to wait you have to wait patiently to get Yeah, to to get your orders, but your designs actually work. We have to speak for you. You have to have really good designs to you know get more clients for yourself. So make sure you have you upload like certain really good stuffs of yours so that you know so that any random person can you know, just pick that design and say, oh my god, I want to have a design like this. So um, yeah, make sure your design speaks really well. Upload it online and as many sites as possible. You you'll surely get freelance uh, uh, jobs. So basically, the designer has to be pro in drawing. No, no, not necessary. You can you don't have to be a pro in drawing. You need to have basic sense of drawing. That's enough. You have to study. three basic things okay you have to study shapes you have to study perspectives and you have to study um, you know lighting that's where you get depth and everything so if you study these three stuffs you know that's enough you you can draw anything you don't have to be a professional artist or you have you don't have to be a pro in drawing you can to be a designer if you are asking right you asked if we can be if they have to be a pro if yeah so uh, you don't have to be a pro in drawing you can have basic drawing drawing skills that should do these illustration guidelines are only for the book cover no 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 since i had actually since the discuss discussion is regarding book cover illustration i had i i kept mentioning about book cover illustration book cover but no this these guidelines are for any illustration any kind of uh, illustration material that you do any kind of design material that design also actually uh, these basic elements and principles that i had uh, mentioned before is for your design for uh, designing anything if you want to design a poster if you want to design a banner a web banner if you want to design anything anything actually a magazine all these elements all these principles have to be followed because they play a major role in design how 
about what color to be used for each type. All these points shall be considered also for many other things. I'm sorry, I didn't get your, I didn't understand your question. How about what color to be used for each type? As in, um, okay, I'm confused as to the, what type are you talking about? I, each type of illustration or each type of design? How do you strike a balance between being unique and not getting trapped in a particular mood? Yeah, that is uh, that is the topic of my next discussion. We'll discuss that soon. I'm confused as to target as to the target audience. Is this aimed at aspiring authors or aspiring readers? If it is the former, I have a question. How can a self-publishing writer, published writer, produce a cover out of such formative reliable traditional? Okay, yeah. Uh, this is for both target for both authors and illustrators. Uh, for authors, I would say that um, yeah. So you you cannot. I don't think you will be able to design on your own. You're an author, right? You're a self-published author. So if you want if you want to have a really good design, like a you know. Uh, traditional publishing published author, uh, you have to approach a designer. Even otherwise, even a traditional published author, they approach a designer. So it has to be more done by a designer. You have to get it done by a designer. So the best bet is to hire an illustrator. Yes, yes, that is what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to hire an illustrator or a designer because they not only come with these basic sense of principles and uh, um, elements they also have like years and practice and experience in this field so um they you have to they have their own style they have their own uh, way of doing things and that's what their job is so you have to hire an illustrator or a designer to design your book it cannot be done on your own the canva side that i had showed you is for the basic design for how your car your card, your cover would be if you had designed your book. If the image, if the imagery or or an illustration is ready for you, if the the illustration illustrator has given you the illustration already, and all you have to do is you know place the title and play with the colors. That's where you can use Canva. Otherwise, to draw to design the book cover from scratch, it is very difficult because that's what what we illustrators do. Color variations for each genre. Okay. Uh, does maintaining page margin really matter in any design? Yes. Yes. Uh, for uh, when you design a front cover or a back cover or anything, you you leave a margin of 0.4 mm and uh, on all the sides and that's important because that's where you crop you crop uh, while you know the sheets while you design when the uh, printing goes this way the design comes in a really big sheet and it comes together like front spine and back so it comes with extra space as well so when you when it goes for binding it goes for cropping it goes for cutting so that's when that 0.4 mm, you know, space that you're supposed to leave uh, while designing. So yeah, that's important. Also gives you a synopsis of the book content, or do you get to read the whole book at the end? Yeah, the author gives the synopsis of the book content. You don't have to read the whole book every time uh, until you know the author does not give you you know enough information that you need to illustrate but uh, the synopsis will do and you already you have a discussion with your author right before you start illustrating you discuss with your author how possible it is how how it can be illustrated you have a discussion basic discussion so you get all ideas then you don't have to read the book is it necessary for a cover designer to have you the particular book yeah so like i said it's not necessary you can just go through the synopsis you can have you have a certain you know uh, discussion with your author so that's enough so 
I guess uh, I have cleared all the doubts. So I think I'll move on to the next topic that's illustration. And um, so uh, illustration. What exactly do you mean by illustration? Illustration is just a drawing, a painting, or a work of art, which usually represents a written text. That, that, that's illustration. You don't have to scratch your head too much for this, but it's just it's just a mixture of drawing and painting and everything. So people often get confused between a designer and illustrator. So let me tell you the basic difference between them. A designer is someone who already has certain elements or who already has certain uh, fonts of his own, certain images, and all he does is places them, you know, uh, aesthetically, places them, you know, based on the basic principles of design and everything. And he works more on typography, he works more on how you position them, how you place each and everything, how you break out the feel of the book. And he more he mostly you know uh, focuses more on the attention of the viewer, so that's what usually a designer does. He has all the input. Whereas an illustrator, he he actually does everything from scratch. He illustrates from scratch, and he has to come up with you know color combinations and how to use everything. You have to do everything from scratch. That's what an illustrator does. And. Um, it's hard to do that because uh, you have to maintain the balance. It's, it's in your hands, maintaining the balance between certain elements. It's in your hands because that's how you are supposed to create an illustration in the first place. So when when you start creating an illustration or an imagery, you have to think about how the title is going to come, how the title is going to be placed, and then you have to do an illustration, or it can be the other way around, whichever way you feel is comfortable. So, Illustration is illustrators don't just you know draw stuff. They also study how to place these elements you know properly and you know make them from scratch. That's the basic difference between a designer and an illustrator. So before I tell you what how to illustrate and what exactly to do, let me give you a brief history about uh, how we got certain illustrations and what all are the types of illustrations. Wood cutting illustration. That's like the, the one one of the first kinds of illustrations that have been uh, that we have been doing. That uh, you know, it uh, it's mostly based. It's mostly done through carved blocks, and uh, it's just mostly single color. There is no there is there are no multiple usage of colors because uh, this was done way back in you know. 1700s, 1700s, and times like that, and there were no there were you know, availability of colors was very difficult at that time. So uh, they used only two colors, white and black, and that's why you see a lot of contrast in these two colors. And because it's wooden blocks, the strokes are really big, but they have been aesthetically you know placed, and they form a really beautiful illustration as well. It just gives you a very, you know, rugged texture, rough texture, but it's beautiful in its own way. Then come, then came the metallic etching, where you know the metal plate is placed on, uh, is covered with a with a wax ground, and then the artist scratches off the ground, you know, with a pointed needles and pointed stuffs, and the plate is inked. All over that there used to be only black ink, so that's how they used to ink the plate. Um, yeah, that's how that's how you get these strokes. If, if you see the strokes are very uh, thin lines and it's uniform in you know certain proportions. So that's how that's how they used to you know uh, scratch off those uh, wax wax ground from the plate. So yeah, this used to this is how they do metallic etching. Then the pencil illustrations that that's very very common and that's that we still do right now 
is the pencil illustrations and uh, it mostly allows you to you know play with different strokes you can get really good depth and um, yeah you get like uh, very sharp and accurate lines out of these pencil illustrations that's how you usually start also illustrations right so uh, pencil illustrations are very comfortable way for us and it's what some um, what usually people comfortably you easily get it as well charcoal charcoal is what uh, illustrators would prefer while illustrating for uh, you know short stories or any any fast sketches that they have to use that's when they use charcoal and uh, it the major advantage of uh, charcoal is it gives you this effect it's a very photographic effect it, it's got a really good depth and uh, it's beautiful it's 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 very realistic when you use charcoal so yeah that's that's uh, that's charcoal for us lithography then uh, lithography is uh, how you draw an image of uh, oil on on an oil you know surface or a wax surface and um, you you know put that onto a very smooth photographic stone limestone plate and you know, it's usually it's usually pale and dull but it gives you certain depth because of the strokes that you use and because of the elements that you use and it's a usually mono shade one color so yeah this is how it looks this is how lithographic illustration looks and it it was it was common during you know 1960s and 70s but uh, people still work on illustrations like these when it's required when there are like certain styles that have to be followed they still follow lithographic watercolor that's very common that you learn at school as well right watercolor is a very you know peaceful kind of uh, illustration it's very soft it's very um heavy it has lots and lots of depth you can keep painting and painting and painting on watercolor that it doesn't get bored you, you can keep, you just bring out the elements beautifully on that and usually it is used for uh, you know for fashion illustrations for children's books for cookery books you use watercolors you know such books require illustrations like these you don't want to you know uh, uh, bring more emphasis to the elements but still make them attractive that's when you use watercolors then gouache illustration is uh, it's kind of a darker version of watercolor and a little opaque version of watercolor um and it's kind of thicker and uh, rich uh, this is the style that we that most of the digital illustration illustrators use as well and uh, while using this you usually use uh, i think poster colors to give your give this effect and that's how you do the shape acrylic acrylic can be uh, you know achieved with both water and oil effect is mostly all fluorescent and bright and metallic colors that we use and uh, you can use it in various mediums like you can use it on a board you can use it on a uh, cloth anything any effect and this illustration these illustrations are used to bring more contrast and uh, it's not it's mostly flat that's how you can say acrylic illustrations are This is not acrylic painting that I'm talking about. That is different. That's the medium that we use. This is acrylic illustration. Then collage illustration. Collage is again like the word is assembling of various elements aesthetically, and you know they bring out a form on their own. That's how, that's how collages work. And um, how well you place your title, your various elements. That that's the illustration is all about. So this is how collage illustration would look like. Pen and ink. Pen and ink is um, is back to style right now. It was it was it was uh, style like in nineties, but uh, that's that's again back to form right now. Many people do design and pen and ink, pen and ink, and uh, um, it it kind of forms. Um, stronger contrast it gives more depth 
and the major plus is you are uh, you have these materials already with you they are accessible they are not expensive they are cheap you just have it in your house anywhere so you can just sketch a you know pen and ink illustration with whatever you have and uh, you can create a more value and depth kind of illustration and freehand digital illustration so you know it gives you a whole new look and feel and uh, gives you it uh, you know helps you bring more effects to your illustration it's very smooth and there are like the transitions are smooth here the um, lighting the lighting and the effects that you give are easier you can give blur options here you can even do that on manual you know illustrations and paintings but here it's more it's more easy it's more easy it's accessible for you so you can make uh, you can make your design and uh, illustration as much complex and detailed for as possible you know in, like how this one is you don't really get to do that in, you know other forms of illustration this you can do it in digital and you can play with colors you get all kinds of shapes you just click and you get your shape so that's how um, digital illustrations work and vector graphics vector is kind of my favorite as well uh, you can the major major plus of vector illustration vector graphics is you can scale them up to as much big as possible you, know, you can they are flat they do create depth but still they are flat, flat and uh, you can make them as big as possible that's that's like the plus of vector so there won't be any loss of quality if you when you do that and uh, this is what you know it's more trending right now so what are the different styles of illustrations that you can do there is like a concept art what you do what you see for fantasy illustrations when you see a you know a gaming illustration an animation illustration you have a concept art right you see the background that they do the environment that they create the uh, elements that they use and the colors also you don't see these colors often you know in any other kind of illustration so concept art is usually popular in the game scene and animation scene comic and graphics something that we all grew up in watching is comics and uh, this is a very very interesting style and it's usually it's a combination of illustration and text and you have speech bubbles you have expression bubbles you have captions you have narrations you have sound effects everything you can do anything and everything but the major challenge is you have this certain script that you have to follow and that's where you have to place your comic illustration so that's the only challenge in this but it's a very fun illustration that illustration style that you can do so yeah that's comic illustration this is children's book illustration children's book illustrations like you know like we have discussed before it's simple it's cute it's very childlike it's friendly they are like uh, you don't you don't feel very you don't feel uh, scared looking at them it's very peaceful and that's how children have to be and they have to be more colorful they have to be attractive so yeah children book illustrations also you can do there is, there is uh, uh, advertising uh, illustration advertising uh, like you see like you see it in your newspaper ads like you see it on magazines and everything uh, it's not something realistic it's for advertising so so like this fanta you add orange you know parachute oranges and you make them into a parachute and that's that's what grabs your attention right so that's what you do when you illustrate for advertising you make impossible things and you know you illustrate them bring more colors make them all you know funky and uh, the more important thing is that should last that should you know last in your uh, in your i in your head that that's what when you think fanta that's what has to come in your mind so uh, that's that's where that's how you illustrate for advertising it has to be uh and it has to be more imaginative it has to 
feel more attractive and it has also it should also speak to your product speak about your product so uh that's the challenge but it's also a fun you know advertising style uh, illustration style and packaging you see a lot of uh, illustrations on packaging as well right so um like uh what we see, what we get here is the paper boat, paper boat packaging that has their own illustrations. That's kind of attractive, that's kind of cute. So this is what is trending right now and it gives us a more uh, personal touch to it and more, you know, connection uh, to that product. So when a package is illustrated, you would want to, you know, pick that up and write. Unlike the you know the traditional regular packages that we usually buy, you would at least buy you know I don't know any product that you know looks attractive, right? First, so that's the kind of illustration that packaging illustration plays a major role. Branding and logo, branding and logo, like the title says, it's it's for branding and logo. It has to be it has to be very simple. It has to have a lot of meaning to to it, like. Uh, you can't just you can't just you know create a logo without any meaning. There has to be a proper research about what the logo is done for, what kind, what the branding is done for, and uh, the kind of colors that the company or the brand uh, holds, and uh, the kind of uh, uh, the kind of industry that brand has. So all that you have you have to study all that and then come up with a basic design for your branding so it has to be very simple it has to last long it has to be easily recognizable it has to be memorable that's what branding illustration is about so how do you exactly illustrate all this so uh, let me show you a step by step process of uh, how i illustrate it and uh, that would give you a rough idea so whenever you illustrate, make sure the first thing that you do is draw a rough sketch, draw a manual rough sketch, not on the system, on your book, on your paper, because that's what you have been, uh, you know, doing since, you know, you since you were a child. That's what has been coming. That's how. That's what has been been with you all these years. So you have that flow in your hand. So you actually have to draw an illustration. You know, manually in a book before you do it, you know, take it digitally. So once you do that, you scan it and you make a rough outline, you know, digitally in your uh, software. And then you give a lighter background shade, a lighter tone to it, whichever lighter tone you need. Then you give basic tone to it, like the whole illustration. Uh, so apart from the yellows and the light greens, you have the, the other the greenish blue colors that I have added all over the page. Then you give a little shade to it. Then you give deep, the little colors to the elements that have been uh, placed around that around the uh, uh, the protagonist or the main element, the girl, and. Uh, you give again more shade to it. This has created a little depth, but not that much depth that we need. So you again, you create a little more depth. You add little more darker shades around the corners of the illustration, between the elements of the illustration, and then you create, you know, you create the character. You render the basic character that has been place in between all these elements and then you give a little depth to your character as well but again this is not enough this is not what we wanted we need more effect on this we need more uh, you know detailing for this this is still flat right so you give a little more darker shade you give lighter tones to your uh, character and that little snail you bring that out as well and yeah this is a uh, the depth you give more depth to it you give you know that this person has been you know uh, illustrating in a jungle between the shrubs or uh, with a snail on the rock whatever so that's the final illustration that's how you bring an illustration you go layer by layer and uh, you don't brush on you know, 
things they don't go directly to the final product you have to go step by step you have to bring out the colors from the background you have to make the colors of the characters bring the flat tone then you have to bring the highlights bring the shadows that's like a big puzzle so it takes time it takes time to do that but once you uh, learn how to do that it's more fun so um more important thing that we need to discuss about is the style so when you want to become an artist you want to become a designer but you just don't want to be just another designer or just another artist just another illustrator so how would you make yourself you know stand out how would you have you know how would you be unique how would you how would your work stand out so you need to have your own style how do you develop your own style before how do you before i explain how you do that let me tell you what style is styling is something that the basic decision definition that uh, i would say is the individual decisions that you make as an artist so you decide to draw the head of the character in a certain way draw the hands of the character in a certain way draw the plants in a certain way draw the uh, you know expressions in a certain way that's you right that's how you decide to do that so that's what you decide and that's what as an artist you implement that in your art so that's what your style is all about again people keep saying that okay i developed my style i have my own style i have been having my style from the very beginning but do you do that right no people don't people usually don't have their style from the very beginning you know you have before you you know have your own style you have to know to how to draw things right that's that's the fundamental okay so um because people who have done that they are not able to you know consistently follow their style or you know uh, bring that style over uh, in their illustration or you know, for certain amount of period of time but um they are unable to follow certain stuff so that's not how a style works your style your style has to be consistent the style has to be with you forever so um so that's how you you have to think that you know okay why am i doing this you have to know the basic fundamentals of drawing drawings right so um you have to learn that Because without knowing the A B C Ds of drawing, your art is going to suck. Your art is not going to have any meaning. Your art is not going to your sell, or at least please you in the first place. So you need to you need to learn your basics. It's like uh, you know uh, you try to you try to you try to to you know write a Spanish poetry without even knowing Spanish. Do you do that? No, right? You have to. learn this you know you have to learn spanish language so in order to learn the language you have to learn the basics so just like that that's how drawings also work you, just because you you know your your pencil flows your strokes come inside no that doesn't mean your drawings are right your drawings have be, will be right only if your fundamentals are right and that's very important again i am not saying that you have to just wait till your fundamentals get right and then only you can have your style and draw no that's how that's not again how things work what i'm trying to say is get your fundamentals understand your fundamentals in your own way how you get them in your own definition whichever way that might be and then and then uh, you know start illustrating come up with a style and you know when only then you can you know see a progress in your art you can see there is a consistency without even understanding or you know looking at the fundamentals you cannot draw you cannot you cannot illustrate you have to at least understand them whichever way you might be you might understand that that's fine it's up to you right so you, you just bring your style there is a process to do that so learn how to do that in that certain way So why do I keep saying style, style, this style, that style, everything? Uh, so for example, Picasso. Picasso had a style of its own. 
his own. So he has done like tons of tons of paintings. He had like become famous. That, but that happened like much later. Like happened over time. And uh, why? Why do you think that would have happened over time? Why did it? Why do you think it took so much time for uh, an artist to bring out a style? It's because before he made paintings like these, he had actually made paintings like these. So you might think that this is just another painting. It's just like how generally artists do. Generally, you know, illustrators do. It's so old. This is. The basic stuff, no, this is the fundamental painting, this is the fundamental art. You see, there is like a lot of detailing to it, there's a lot of shadows and text to it. You know, the lighting that has been given, the effect that has been given, the realistic touch that has been given. You wouldn't get that without you know your fundamentals, right? So, he did all this before he did, you know, came up with illustrations like this his style you recognize him for this style but not without this style so that's why i keep saying style is important style is important only when you have your fundamentals uh, you know at least uh, right you know your fundamentals so style basically sets you apart from people you know um you whenever you Whenever someone would, uh, you know, go through their Insta feed or their Facebook wall or whatever, and they spot your painting, they should be able to, you know, recognize that and say that it's your work without even looking at your username. That's how you bring the style. That's how. That's what style is all about. You have to make people recognize you before you. I mean, uh, without even telling your name, without even mentioning your name in web. Also. Having an illustration style helps you in uh, the marketing sense as well. So uh, when you're starting, at, uh, you know, when you start, when you start drawing, when you start illustrating, it might seem a little overwhelming for you because there are like tons and tons of illustrators out there who are, you know, trying to push their way through this illustration world and come out and, you know, uh, come out on the spotlight. But they have own styles not everyone has their own styles they have combinations of styles you don't get you know a fresh new style of your own you don't create a new style you have created a style based on certain aspects and those aspects are like the combinations of certain artists to inspire you and um, a certain way of just your experiences your Way, you know, the way you draw, the way you look at things, the way you have, like, the way you have been raised, the kind of company you have, the kind of friends you have, the kind of acquaintances you have, the kind of artists you follow, the kind of music you listen to, the kind of food you like. You know, all this makes you, right? That's because you have experienced it on the first hand level. So, your art, your style is a combination of all this. You know, in spite of all this, you would still want to, you know, take few aspects from every illustrator and, and artist that you have been following. But, you know, that's okay. That's fine. That's what every artist does. What you shouldn't be doing is not rip it off from one, you know, one particular artist. That's copying and that is wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. You should take, you know, you should try implementing aspects, different aspects from different artists. That's fine. Your art will be a combination of all that. But if your art is a copy of another artist, that's plagiarism. That's wrong. That that shouldn't be, that shouldn't happen. That, that is not yours then. That is being just copied. That, there's nothing new that has already been done that is wrong and I realized it the hard way as well. I used to do that. I used to copy a lot. I used to uh, think that copying was fine. So what happened was when I was a kid, I used to uh, read a lot of comics, watch a lot of cartoons and I loved that. I still do watch cartoons and comics but yeah, I used to do, do that when I was a kid. And uh, that's what actually inspired me to draw start drawing in the first place and you know, try all that 
different characters what happens if i you know make something like this what happens if i start drawing a girl like that and everything and it just got better over time but um i was never you know okay wow no i didn't feel that uh, after a point i just uh, i was just like okay i think i should start creating my own character my own style so i started copying certain artists but it was very obvious i started cert- copying like the way they drew the way they uh, drew the eyes the way the effect that they had given for the background the atmosphere the environment i used to do that and um, you know what people told when they looked at my work they were like wow this looks exactly like that artist work wow you have done a great job and i was like oh man i sucked i sucked that was that was like the worst thing that i can hear it's like telling me you have ripped off the style very well you're so good at copying no i sucked i was like oh my god no this is not what i wanted no so that's when i realized and i did what i did was i expanded my art circle art circle so i studied art i did my um, you know visual art i did my master i studied art i i met lot of artists i interacted with lot of designers and the more and more i expanded my circle the more ideas i used to get and it made you know bring my own style so um so for a person who can draw stuff like this then she was 17 years old you might be thinking that oh man she is so good at art she is going to you know uh, hit the rock she is going to be like a illustrator this should be a piece of cake for her she can just do it right no no that's not how it is done i stuck when i did my portraits this is something that i had learned when you know in my drawing class this is not what an illustrator does on an artist does my drawings were bad my drawings were really really bad they were all crap and most importantly they were not my type i was just drawing what my teacher was saying i was just drawing what my teacher asked me to do and you know copy from certain books and everything but over time like i said like i had expanded my circle art circle i eventually started drawing and these are the kind of sketches that you know um uh, helped me like it was like an evolution and um, i started drawing sketches pen sketches like these and i i started drawing anything and everything there is no specific thing that you just draw you know human anatomy or you just draw tree you know draw nature you know, animal no i started drawing anything and everything and uh, it just didn't make sense but it's okay what i wanted was my style i slowly started developing my style it was more comical it was more smooth it was it was giving that certain kind of effect over time and that's when i came up with an illustration like this like recently last week i had done this and posted it on instagram for our challenge that i had uh, uh, participated in you know the galileo art challenge seven day art challenge uh this is this is my latest and this is how my style developed and this is what my style is so this is the kind of illustrations that i do right now and um so this is what this is what you should be doing you should you know research more you should explore more you should you should not restrict yourself to certain things certain aspects alone you should be able to you know look through details you should be able to uh, know certain things you should look for say, that 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 uh, you know that hunger that craving for you know knowing stuff you need you need to have that so if if you have noticed like certain artists mostly the famous ones the famous artists the famous illustrators they have their own style they have their own um, you know they have their uniqueness they stand out from the crowd you, you remember them by their art by their art form or their style but what is very common between them is they have been consistently practicing they have been practicing 
practicing practicing that is very common and practicing not for like days or months we have been practicing for like years and decades not days of months years and years and decades and decades and uh, that's what is more important that that is the kind of practice you need to get into a certain style so um for example let's say you are trying to learn a poetry so before you learn a poetry in a language that you don't know you need to learn the language first right you need to learn the language first to learn the language you have to learn the ab series of the language then you learn the a you know the words you know how to form words small small words and then through once you learn those words you kind of learn the grammar of how is was and whatever you use that and with the help of that you kind of make paragraphs of uh, the you know the words the knowledge that the knowledge of the language that you have then out of that paragraph when you turn that paragraph into some you know uh happy voice you make a poetry lot of happy poetry lot and lot of happy poetry and then after lots and lots and lots and lots of happy poetry you make one decent poetry that's what inspires you to make another decent poetry and after that you make certain good poetry after certain good poetry there comes the really good poetry that attracts you know the reader the the listener whoever that is attractive to the audience so that's when you feel like oh man now i can write poetry after that you consistently keep writing poetry for a longer time and you become like the master right but this doesn't happen like overnight right it happens it takes you know years to years for this to happen just like that drawing and illustrating and bringing your own style happens you know that's that that's how much time you need to you know uh get your own style to have in order to be unique you need to wait you need to be patient it will happen it will happen but it just takes time so the next thing that we will be discussing is experimenting versus playing it safe so a lot of people talk about you know coming out of your comfort zone and you have to experiment a lot uh, i i think that's good okay but i find that it might be uh just my opinion that it's your art style right so it shouldn't be way out of your comfort zone this is where you're going to be working for the rest of your life so you might want to sit there you know where you are comfortable and then work because if you're not comfortable your your everything changes so which you which you don't want right your work has to be what you're comfortable at so it's okay to stay in your comfort zone it's okay to you know experiment once in a while and push yourself out at times but overall your style and your your style should be something that you are really comfortable with and something that you know you want to talk about instead of you know you want to think and talk about something that you just want to talk about comfortably right open how do you do that the first thing that you do is you learn what to do with your illustration so what do you exactly want to do while you illustrate do you want to illustrate for advertising do you want to illustrate for children's books do you want to illustrate for an editorial work or do you want to illustrate for you know your own uh, personal feeling whatever you, you want to doodle do you want to showcase your art to be clear about what do you want to do when you illustrate so that's what will you know get you you know a clarity to bring a style of your own so for example you want to do children's book you might want to consider who is popular in those children's book series uh, who is good at illustrating those children's books and uh, buy those books you know approach those artists look how they design research how they illustrate follow follow their process follow certain aspects on, you know uh, about how they design or illustrate and uh, it won't change your style completely but 
it will help you in building up your style that's what i would say another thing that you would want to know you know whether to experiment or to you know stay in your comfort zone is your skill set you know you should be clear about what your strengths and weaknesses are so um in order to know that you should be more you should you know you should actually try different mediums different stuff before you decide on what your strengths and weaknesses are so for example i am not very inclined to charcoal my uh my strengths are watercolors my strengths are digital illustration i am clear about that so i will be working more on my strengths and let, i mean not that i would but i wouldn't be working on my weaknesses but that wouldn't lead me to anywhere so uh so once you recognize so you recognize what your strengths and weaknesses are and you know your style must play to your strengths and it must hide your weaknesses you just have to not that i'm not saying you didn't you shouldn't work or hide your weaknesses you know, in certain ways but um you must know to play your cards in a smart way and uh, if for example if you are very bad at drawing a realistic drawing a portrait drawing isn't something that you have to take you have to consider doodling you have to consider you know rough water stroke rough acrylic so about what you can do what you cannot do choose your style accordingly and that's that's how you decide you know whether you have to stay in your comfort zone or not so again i i'm saying i would like to say that uh, you know try coming up with a style so that people will recognize you people will tell you who you are uh, without you know talking to you without even looking at your name they'll be able to tell you by looking at those illustrations and uh, research more work on your work on your basics your fundamental work on your strengths and weaknesses and then you will be able to come up with a style and this will not happen today this will not happen tomorrow it will take time it will take lots and lots of time you have to be patient if you have the passion be patient wait for the right time you will be able to get your own style nothing it's not that it's not possible anything is possible you will be able to do it you just have to know to do things right you don't you shouldn't be you know b doesn't come after a right a b c d it's not b a c d right that's how things work that's the basic rules that's the basic you know fundamentals of alphabet that's, that's the language that so that you need to you need to you know be strong with your basic fundamentals and you need to be right you need to be true to it in order to you know bring your own style so um how to draw digitally there are two major uh, stuff that you can do is uh, there are there's like a hardware and software apart from you know drawing basics that we had just discussed there is a uh, hardware and software so hardware is the tablets that we get is we get a neon tablet we get wacom cinti pro if you are looking for something that is cheaper you can uh, try the neon tablets uh, neon tablets are very they are smaller in size the features are less but if you are a basic uh, you know if you're a beginner and you would want to try digital art this is a you know good um, hardware that you can use if you are a professional and uh, you are looking for something much more than just a tablet you can go for wacom cinti pro that is the tablet that comes with a screen on it uh doesn't mean you shouldn't you shouldn't be connecting it to the computer it works only when you connect it to the computer uh it it is an additional screen and it is more helpful because you draw on the screen in that the only drawback is that you have your that touch sensitive so if your palm rests or, uh, on it then you know your layers might open and what a layer might open it might disturb your drawing flow that is the only disadvantage of you know touch screen uh, tablets but otherwise those are the those are the uh, tablets that the professional use and uh, that's very useful you know for digital illustration you cannot draw it not try the mouse buy a huion tablet if you are a beginner and uh, that's like a you know just a fancy mouse it's a fancy mouse with a pen and a tablet 
the thing is it might take time for you to get used to this because uh, you will be drawing on a tablet down and the result the outcome is on the screen so the hand eye coordination is a little challenging in the beginning but uh, through practice you will you know get used to it and you can master stuff Apart from hardware, you need to know the softwares that are available right now to you know, illustrate digitally. There's Artwitch, there's Krita, Autodesk, Sketchbook, and Meribank Paint. These four softwares are free softwares that you find online on, in their website. So these are the basic illustrator softwares that you use, designer softwares. If you are a beginner, you can use this. And you have paid Adobe Photoshop. That's very expensive you get try you get you know uh, you get it anywhere and everywhere but it's very expensive if you are a professional then it's uh, highly recommended that you buy a photoshop and uh, and use it um, otherwise if you are just looking for you know beginning to illustrate everything the above uh, softwares artwitch creator autodesk sketchbook and very bank will be helpful for you. So let me give you a short demo of how to illustrate. So I have um I'm opening Photoshop okay I have I use this software and I have um I have a Wacom Intuos. I have an Intuos that it's uh this is a little small uh, pad that I use, and you can connect that to the USB port. And you have a pen along with this. This is the pen that I use. So this is how you illustrate on this. For those who are new to digital illustration, not done this. This is how I use. Okay. So now, like you can see my screen. Um, this is the basic Photoshop uh, uh, UI that you see. So, if I open a layer, the basic thing that you do is you know, draw a line. Draw a line, make a center, make basic shapes of what your illustration form has to be. This is where you know understanding the shapes come from. Let me share you. Okay, now, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is the basic uh, drawing that you do before you know you get into the skills. And uh, so once you draw the shape, you give details to your. Before that, you form another layer. You don't want to ruin the shapes, right? Give details to give a little depth to your drawing. This is how you illustrate, okay? So, step by step, I just wanted to show you like a brief of this. I cannot get into the details right now because of the time issue here. So uh, this is how you illustrate, okay? So make sure you start with shapes, basic shapes. So you hide the basic shape layer, you have this.
that's how you come up with a form. Sorry, this is taking time, but yeah, we can uh, do this later as well. So I just wanted to show you that this is how digital illustrations are done. You come up with tiles first, you come up with uh, shapes first, you know what to draw, you give a little detail to it. Like I had shown in my um, presentation here. Yeah, like I had shown in my presentation. Um, this is how you illustrate, okay? You have to the step by step, right? You get the you get the Get the rough sketch, you make an outline, you bring colors one by one, like layer by layer. Make sure you have you know each and every element in different layers, you know, you render it in different layers and you bring depth slowly by adding all darker shades. And uh, yeah, that's how you can do that. This is what the illustration is all about. So, is there any questions that you would like to know about illustrations? How about manual sketch? You mean edit your manual sketch digitally? Yeah, we can still edit manual sketches digitally. You can, you know, uh, sketch it on your book first and then you can you know, edit it. What differences do you put between an illustrator? Like I had said before, uh, an illustrator is someone who creates some uh, stuff you know, uh, from scratch. You have to create an imagery from scratch, you have to create a type from scratch. Designer has everything, he studies how you know how it has to be put in certain ways. He has studied how the elements of design, the type of uh, principles of design, he tells us you know how exactly. Uh, the elements have been given elements have been put, whereas the illustrator does things from scratch. What is the approximate pricing for book cover illustration? It varies from person to person, illustrator to illustrator, like how experienced you are, how your work is, because a, a black and white illustration and a color illustration changes. But a minimum pricing that you would like to give, or a basic pricing that you would like to give is. Um, 2000 bucks for basic cover illustration on average. When it comes to medium, are poster colors and watercolors the same? No, poster colors are different. Poster colors are flat. Poster, poster colors are more brighter and uh, flat. They are opaque colors. Uh, like I had mentioned the gauche illustration, right? That's, uh, that's the uh, kind of effect that you get from poster colors, whereas watercolors is more airy. Soft, it gives you more depth. How you decide on the size of the illustration it depends on how you use your, your illustration. Like, for example, if it's for a book cover, so it depends on the book cover size. So, what exactly what uh, book cover does an author does the author ask for? It depends on that. If you're asking for a poster design, it depends on the size of the poster. So, it depends on the medium exactly. Uh, the illustrations are based on what medium you usually illustrate on. More questions? I hope, I hope uh, this helped. Uh, all these illustrations of illustrations shown are only contained in digital medium or are they printed? Yeah, they are both handmade and digital. I have shown you the mixture of handmade and digital illustrations. Handmade is still there. We have not completely, uh, you know, gone into digital. People still do handmade illustrations and we have to look for them. We have, they, they, they are, they are, what I have shown is the mixture of these. Thank you so much. I, I was glad that this was helpful. 
becoming more popular on digital. How does the future of this space look like? There are still more. Uh, there are. We think that you know, uh, most more there are more e-books now than you know, uh, printed books. But we do get a lot of printed books. It's still going on right now. It has not reduced. Maybe the amount of e-book publishing has increased, but the print publishing is still there. And um, and that doesn't, you know, stop us from illustrating or designing. When for an e-book, you still design and illustrate. It's just there is a difference in the medium that you use. Still the same. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Still a big seller, exactly. Yeah, that helps a lot. You won't believe how it feels to have a book uh, in your hand than you know in the digital form. It's nothing. Digital books don't give you that much of connection like you know a book does. So it's still, it's still you know, it's still in the market. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm really happy that this helped. You guys, I could I could be a good help you. I could you know cover everything. I hope I did cover it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are uh, there a wide range of scope in society for illustrating? Yes, yes, actually yes, because um it's it's more uh it's in more trend right now, and there are a lot of courses that are a lot of uh, uh you know. Uh, diploma courses, degree courses based on this. It's, it's this is what you know uh, many people do right now, and most of them are inclined to do. We see a lot of illustrators. It's in the market, and there is a lot of scope for us. There is like every every medium is you know requiring a an illustrator or a designer you know to come up with something different. You don't want to have the same stuff again, right? You don't want to right? So. Uh, it has to be different. So yeah, they, they they are looking for a lot of illustrators. There is a lot and lot of school for us illustrators. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more question guys or is it going to be a wrap? Lavinia has not had uh, even water for a long time. She's been like talking for so long. So do we have any more questions guys? Any more questions? Thank you Galileo. Thank you Elan and Rahul for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with everyone. Definitely, definitely, it's been a pleasure. I Your, really loved it. Was like I really loved amazing. it. Awesome. I really loved working on this session. Thank you so much, everyone, for being participating it throughout the same workshop. Yeah, I felt really nice. Thank you so much. So guys, uh, if you uh, want to know more about this session and we do have an advanced course as well. So if you guys want to take it up, you can reach uh, Galerio here, uh, Galerio.com. So we'll get back to you with any kind of answers that you're actually looking for or if you're looking for uh, some type of guidance towards this or any kind of, uh, uh, what to say. Uh, the course materials or if you want to know more and uh, we do have a course coming up for this book illustration as well. So you can reach out to us on elin.galerio.com and uh, this has been the first uh, online session for art, right? So uh, generally we do offline sessions. So this is actually the first online session that we've conducted today. And we're so happy that so many of you had actually come with your interest towards uh, interest towards art and stuff.
so this is going to be uh, really awesome so we'll be coming up with another kind of this kind of very similar and very useful session for all of you people so till then we can catch up on this and uh, we're also uh, available on uh, all the social media platforms and we'll have, we'll be shortly creating a whatsapp group you guys can join in there and uh, start uh, interacting with uh, fellow artists as well so that's about it guys so yeah, sure, we'll keep you posted about the future uh, workshops and events and our courses also. So that's about it, guys. So we're very happy that uh, so many of you like are actually appreciating this kind of an effort that we are actually putting into this. Uh, it's been a great pleasure, Lavinia. So she's been like uh, full on, like nobody, I, I think like uh, doing it for two hours together, it's not <laughs> impossible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that was so you guys can also share some works of your own, make some rough sketches, and uh, uh, you know, share it on the Insta page, you know, share it on the Galileo page. And, and why don't you guys do something like that? Why don't you come up with something? So at least I can know if I will, it will help you. And uh, yeah, it would be nice to see some of your work there. So, anything, 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 you can just sketch anything and. Uh, yeah. I think like you'll be more happier because if people start sending some artworks to you after this, right? So that's what Lavinia is actually wanting to see. So you guys, uh, you guys start sharing some of your work that you actually created from what you learned from today. I think that's going to make the presenter very much happier uh, than before. So that's great. So awesome, guys. So we have had a uh, superb evening here. And uh, we'll send you the Instagram handles of uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, I have an there. Insta page of my own. Yes, definitely. Uh, I will share the link with you. I'm sure. Exactly. So we'll send you a follow-up mail with all the details as such. In that mail, we'll be sending you everything, guys. You don't have to worry. Okay. Thanks a lot, people. So it has been a great pleasure. So we'll be just uh, closing the session right now. And uh, thanks to you, Lavinia, again. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you, ma'am.